everyone. On behalf of Primary English faculty, I wish you all a convivial welcome. We are going to have a merry and enjoyable time together. Today, we are going to understand the importance importance of art integration. In our core curriculum, for this, let us first understand what is art integration. So I request Ma'am Hina to brief you about the same. Someone has rightly said, art is something that makes you breathe with a different kind of happiness. Good afternoon, everyone. As we know, we have gathered here to comprehend to comprehend the pragmatic nature of art integration. But first, let us talk about art. What is art? Art is painting, sculpture, drawing, expression, or feeling. But according to aesthetic principle, it has more than ordinary significance. Integration is a process of making into whole. It is fundamental when we coalesce art and integration, it becomes a powerful word. It has many connotations. For example, art integration is inculcation of arts discipline with a traditional subject as a part of learning. It is use of arts in our whole curriculum of classrooms. Now why art integration is important in our schools? Art integration is important because it has so many benefits. It helps children to develop their uh, motor skills, language skills, social skills, and moreover, holistic de development. So uh, let us understand now what is experiential learning. Experiential learning uh, is having hands-on experience. Now let us watch video and experiential learning so that we can have a better understanding of For the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. It was true then and it's true now. Experiential learning, put simply, is learning by doing. Following the experiential learning model and designing instruction can help maximize our learner's understanding of important concepts. The experiential learning model consists of first doing, then reflecting on it, then applying what was learned to another situation. Then we repeat the cycle each time adding difficulty or refining our skills. The experiential learning model consists of a five-step cycle. Here it is right here. Step one, experience. Experience the activity. This is learning by doing after all. Have your learner perform a task. Step two, share. Share the results. Describe the experience. Get your learners thinking about and talking about the results, the reactions, and sharing this publicly. Step three, process. This is where you examine how the learning process works. Have your learners examine and discuss and analyze the experience and then reflect on it. Step four, generalize. Your learners need to be able to connect this experience to other real world examples. Step five, apply. Now your learners should be able to take what they learn from this experience and apply it to a similar or different situation. And when we apply something to a new situation, we get to experience the activity all over again. We find ourselves back at step one, and the experiential learning cycle repeats itself. Experience, share, process, generalize, apply. It really works. Try it today. Get your learners doing, reflecting, applying, and then doing again. Thanks, and if you... So, today's topic is now, and we have integrated sketching, drama, and music. So I would like to call Madam Jigyasa to start the session on nouns. Good afternoon, children. How are you all today, sit down? Okay, so after a long time, we are back to school? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I hope you all are staying safe and healthy and following all the rules of COVID? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's get started. So today, we are going to begin the class with a very interesting topic. For that, you have to tell me what all things you see around you. Table. Yes. Okay, table. Chair. Chair, very good. 
Boat, very good, yes. Fan, very good, yes. Pen. Okay, table, chair, boat, fan. Can anybody tell me what all these words are? These are called naming words. Naming words, absolutely. And what are naming words? Nouns. So children always remember anything above the sun, under the sun, around the sun, and including the sun is a noun. This was icebreaker activity. It helps to create a relaxed environment. It breaks the silence when students share their ideas and build rapport among students. So children, now note down the definition of noun. Words used as the names of person, places, ideas or things are called nouns. And write in a very neat handwriting. So today, we are going to start with an activity and the name of the activity is My Favorite Things. You are going to tell me your favorite things and I am going to write on the board. Yes, one by one. Apple. Apple, very good. Ice cream. Ice cream. I am sleeping. Sleeping, okay. Chocolate. Yes. Garden. Garden, very good. Plain. Playing, okay. So, apple, ice cream, sleeping, chocolate, garden, and playing. Now, who will come here and underline the naming words over here? Yes, raise your hands. Okay. Uh, Joycey, you come here and underline the naming words. Very good. Okay, that's great. Now tell me whether it is correct. Can anybody of you tell me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Apple, ice cream, chocolate and garden. All these are naming words. But what about sleeping and playing? They are action words. Words which we call as action words. This I am going to teach you in the next chapter. Okay? Very good, Joycey. My favorite this is for you. My favorite thing is activity increases students' consciousness, boosts their confidence, and enhances vocabulary. Okay, so children, I taught you a poem on nouns last, in your last session. Uh, so who remembers the poem on nouns? Can anybody of you come here and recite the poem? Okay, very good. Pray now. Bharti and Jyoti. Okay, come forward and recite the poem.
teaches creative problem solving. Okay, now children tell me, do you know what are the kinds of nouns? So the first is common noun, proper noun, collective noun and abstract noun. There are four kinds of nouns. So let's begin with the common noun. Common noun is the general name given to a person, place, ideas or things. For example, park, city, hospital, boy or a girl. Now who's going to give me some more examples of common noun? Okay, Shobhna, stand up very good. That's great. Sit down. So now we have proper noun. Children, proper noun is the special name given to a person, place, ideas or things. And always remember, proper noun begins with a capital letter. So the examples of proper noun are Gateway of India, Jaipur, Sachin, etc. So now, who will give me more examples of proper noun? Very good, Joycey. Okay, just speak out. Okay, that's great. So I hope you all have understood the difference between the common noun and proper noun. I hope you all have understood. Okay, Bharti has not understood. So let me make it more clear with the help of a role play. Who is uh, willing to come here and uh, for the role play on common noun, proper noun? And Prena and Jyoti, come forward. Very good. I am a proper noun. I always start with capitalize. My, uh, I always, uh, my letter, uh, I'm all, uh, my first letter is always capitalized when used at the beginning of the sentence. I am a special name of a place, person, thing or animal. I am a general name of a person, place, thing or animal. Do you know my examples are? The Taj Mahal. Maishri Public School, Sachin Tendulkar. And my examples are schools, parks, hospital, etc. Very good. Clap for them. And this is for you. Thank you. Now, Marty, I hope now you have understood the difference between the common and proper noun? Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Role play encourages creativity and imagination. It fosters social and emotional development. It improves communication and language. So the third one is collective noun. Collective noun is the name given to a group of persons, animals or things of same class. For example, a flock of sheep, a team of bears, an army of soldiers. So these are the examples of collective noun. Now who's going to give me more examples? A school of whales. Very good. Next. A school of whales. Okay, that's great. Sit down. Very good. And children, now to make it more clear, I have an activity for you on collective noun. Four of you, please come forward. These are the flashcards. Please hold it. Stand like this. I'll tell you what to do. And these are the objects. Now, one of you will come forward and read out this flashcard. And whosoever is having the object related to it will come and stand next to her. Yes. Very good. Yes. A bouquet of flowers. Very good. So now have you understood what are collective nouns? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Usage of flashcards improves knowledge and ability to understand, improves visual memory and focus. Now children, the fourth kind of noun is the abstract noun. Abstract noun expresses the ideas, concepts or qualities that cannot be seen. We cannot see, hear, touch, taste or smell these concepts. For example, bravery, courage, freedom and kindness. Now who is going to give me more examples in abstract noun? Very good, sir. Love, That's great. So can you frame a sentence on any of these? Yes, ma'am. Honesty is the best policy. That's right. So honesty is the best policy is the best example for abstract noun. So children, I hope now you all have understood the concept of abstract noun? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Framing a sentence activity develops fluency, enhances vocabulary, builds language skills and listening skills. Okay, now children, we have a last activity for the day and the name of the activity is Sort the Nouns. For this, I have some sticky notes with me and the words are written on every slip. So two of you can come forward. Okay, Bharti and Manchu, please come forward. You have to paste these slip under the correct heading. Okay, just hold it and write them. Common, proper, collective, and abstract. Place uh, and place these uh, slips under the correct category. Yes. Word is mountain. Okay, very good. So it's a common. Noun. That's great. And the word is Australia. Proper noun. Great. Very good. And the last word is crowd. It is collective now. Very good. Clap for these two girls, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Okay. This activity is used to assess the students' understanding of the concept. It clears their doubts too. Now, children, I hope you all have understood nouns and the concept of nouns, the kinds of nouns. Now let's recapitulate the topic with a song. And remember, everybody has to sing the song along with it, okay? Yes. Inculcation of song helps in enhancing auditory skills and improves coordination. It enhances vocabulary and teamwork. Everybody's a